Would you guys like to know how Steven grew Northwest Softwash into a six figures per month soft washing business in just a matter of a year and a half? You guys, he started with $1,500 and today makes more than $120,000 a month with only 11 employees. On this episode, we're talking to the entrepreneur, Steven, who started Northwest Softwash when he was only 19 years old. Today, they're doing about six to seven locations for their clients, and their business generates more than a million dollars in revenue each year. Per day, you know, per truck could do anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a day, and it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, especially when you're starting out. How do you decide on what services to offer, and what's the most profitable one? There you go, guys. Ask him a ton of questions. He'll be there to answer. A bad month, we could be doing 80 to 100,000. Whoa. <laughs> Steven also went hands off with his business within a few months by hiring employees and he started focusing on growth. We're growing so rapidly, we're using a lot of our cash to invest back in the business. Facebook is gonna be a powerful tool for you. Let's talk about building a strong team. And so if they start seeing your photos and your brand in those groups, you'll have a lot more business. How many jobs are you guys doing on average every day? Those are two things that go a long ways with clients. So let's go and meet the man. This is their warehouse right here. It's about 1,400 square feet. They've got a little office right here. So we're gonna knock on the door and see what they're up to. You Steven? Awesome, Paul? Steven, yes, good to nice meet, to you. meet you. Good to see you, man. Look forward to sharing your story. Let's awesome, do this, looking guys. forward to it. You guys, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you watching. Hit that bell so you don't miss anything. And let's dive into questions with Steven. Steven, tell us about your background and how you started Northwest Softwash. For sure. So I started Northwest Softwash actually in 2020. Um, at the beginning of the year, I previous had a pressure washing company. And so mm -hmm. I started as a pressure washing company, then realized I didn't want to use the high pressure on homes. I didn't want to pressure wash a roof, didn't want to pressure wash siding. And so I went completely into a different area of that field and started the softwash company, which is what it is now. And we'll dive into the difference between pressure and soft. But what about your background? You're such a young man and you're successful year two in the business. What did you do before high school, university, college? What can you tell us? about that. Yeah, thank you. So um, yeah, so I didn't really go to college. Um, straight out of high school, I was doing a bunch of different things. I uh, flipped iPhones. I renovated RVs. I um, okay. always knew that I wanted to work for myself. It was never really something. I did try working for others, but it wasn't something that uh, I wanted to do long term. So knew I needed to do this. And pressure washing was just a good gateway into what I wanted to do. Yeah. No story behind that, no grandpa pushing you and say, hey, go wash my house. No, no, no crazy, unique, fun story behind the, 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 the choice of pressure washing? Yeah, well, my brother owns a window cleaning company. Uh -huh. And so um, I was kind of looking for something, what to do next. And he said, hey, Steven, what about pressure washing? You know, he was okay. specifically doing windows. And I thought, well, that might be a great opportunity. I kind of looked into it a little bit more and uh, just went for it. What was your initial budget when you got started and where did you get the money? Yeah, great question. Initial budget, you know, I didn't really have one. Of course, you know, as a young 19 year old, I probably only had about $2,000 in my account, but that the 1,000 to 1,500, I knew that I, that was what I needed to at least start. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, I would work on marketing and try to figure out how I would get customers for that. Okay, say I don't have any money. I wanna do what you're doing. I'm on YouTube learning, but I'm like, man, 1,200 bucks, 2,000 bucks, I don't have it. What would you do at that point with what you know now and experience wise? Yeah. Great question. I mean, parents and grandparents are, are literally, family in general is the best place to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, going, going to your parents and washing their house for them or pressure washing their driveway there for you them. Go. Um, there's neighbors. Uh, there's so many people that are in your power base, which are family members and uh, relatives um, and, and neighbors that would be more than happy to help you um, and help kick you into, into high gear. So, so don't be afraid to ask. 100%, that power base is super important. All right, Steven, tell our audience where we're going and let's make this exciting. Awesome, yeah, so we're gonna be headed to Portland, Oregon, which is right down the street from us in, in Washington, and we're gonna go see our awesome crew doing a roof cleaning, a house wash, some pressure washing, it'll be epic. I'm excited to go check them out. Stay tuned, let's go to the job site and check it out. You guys, we are in a pretty cool neighborhood in Portland here. Sounds like we're, seems like we're surrounded by trees and everything. We're gonna go check out a job site with Steven here. We're gonna take a look at all their crew, all their equipment, their trucks, and really get down to the nitty and gritty. So let's go let's check do it, it out. 
Awesome. awesome. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, but as we're getting closer, let's talk about profit margins that, that you operate under and what are the industry standards that you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. So typically for roof clean business and soft wash business like us, um, profit margins would be anywhere from a 25% to 30% okay. net profit. Um, and that's just general terms. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how, you know, what your payroll is like, what your overhead is like. There's a lot right. of different things that affect that. Is that about where you're operating as well or did you find how, somehow find a way to increase that? Yeah, so um, I, we're, we're right around 20, 25% because we're growing so rapidly. We're using a lot of our cash to invest back in the business. Mm -hmm. um, however, 30% is usually a very good number to be at. So okay. eventually we would like to be in that, in that range. Okay. Now, I know we keep talking about, you know, the word pressure washing. Your business is called soft wash. Tell our audience what the difference is, what the benefits are, because you ultimately switched from pressure washing to soft washing. I'm clueless what that is. <laughs> Tell us the difference. For sure. So pressure washing is the idea of, of using very high pressure um, when you're cleaning the driveway. But we switched to soft wash in 2020. Um, and soft wash is the idea of using chemical and soap to clean the surface instead of high pressure. So we can spray it on there, it dissolves all the, the, the dirt, the, the algae, and then we rinse it with a low pressure that you can actually put your hand in front of. Wow. So it's a very different technique that utilizes low pressure. What made that switch for you? You know, it's just a really, it's really important um, that, that we aren't pressure washing siding, we aren't pressure washing roofs. Um, it just damages so much. So the switch was when, I have a better idea. This can clean mm -hmm. way better. You don't have to get up on high ladders. You can do it mostly from the ground. And customers love the idea that we're not damaging their property in the process. You guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. But also stay tuned to the end of the video where Steven is gonna share an incredible hack for you guys on how to be successful in this business. What's the monthly average overhead for your business right now? Yeah, great question. Right now, it's anywhere from thirty to forty thousand a month. Okay. Um, and I could be off on those numbers a little bit, but typically, you know, you have your shop expense, you have all your vehicles, um, and you have your staff that's on salary. Mm -hmm. So those are those are things that affect the overhead. But I don't have that percentage exactly dialed down right now off the top of my head, but. It is a significant amount that adds to that um, yeah. that total revenue. Yeah, I was gonna say you're dealing with some pretty serious numbers. I mean, that's that's good. What is your current monthly revenue? Um, what is the seasonality look like for this kind of business? Right? When is it most busy? Less? And what's a good day or a good month, bad month for for this business? Sure. So in the busy season, which is usually spring through fall, okay. um, right now this year. Um, we're doing right about 120,000 a month. Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. an insane number. Wild, especially for our second year in business. Wow. But a, a bad month could look at, you know, in the winter times for us this year specifically, we could be doing 80 to 100,000 a okay. month. So that what would be November, December, winter time uh, area. Mm -hmm. So, um, a, you know, per day, um, per day, you know, per truck could do anywhere from Fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a day. So, if okay. you multiply that by how many trucks you have, you can you can get the numbers pretty quickly. Okay. So, tell me about your structure with the trucks, because you mentioned that earlier, and that's some to the extent where you're trying to get a certain dollar amount per truck. Yeah. Um, so, share that with us, that model. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we have kind of our our scale on each truck. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to be anywhere, like I said, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a day. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's less, depending on what kind of job we're doing. Is it a big roof? Is it a big house? Or is it just a small little job? you know right. or if we're using a lot of chemical are we not using a lot of chemical so there's a bunch of different things there uh, but yes right in that range is usually a, a very sweet spot for us okay and how many trucks do you have right now we're running three this is 2021 um, and we're, we're running three trucks full-time and next year is is the year for growth we're planning on putting three more okay so. growth is good Stephen, how long did it take you to break even in the business? Yeah, so with pressure washing, like I said, we only had about a fifteen hundred dollar uh, startup cost. Mm -hmm. So really, right away, it only took a few jobs <laughs> to really that's true to really pay that off or to you know at least break even on that, and then uh, going forward. So I really used a lot of that cash flow just to keep going throughout the year. Okay. Steven, let's talk about forms of advertisement when you first got started. What was the most successful? Let's dive into that because I think it's really most important. Yeah, no, I, I already thought of them when you were asking that. Um, Facebook. 
So for listeners and that, that are just starting their business and just getting out into the marketplace, mm -hmm. Facebook is gonna be a powerful tool for you. And I'll kind of explain a little bit on why. So when I first started, I went into all the community groups in my area. So this is, you know, different cities like Battleground, Vancouver, and they all have these little community Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And I would go into those groups and I would uh, apply to be inside of it because most of the time you have to apply to get inside of it. So I'd apply right. to all of the groups around me. And then I would go ahead and every time I'd finish a job, I would take before and afters and I would upload those into all of the community groups around my area. And I wouldn't be spammy. Uh, the idea is to not be spammy because people do not like, you know, they're just, that's not what, what you're there to do is to advertise, but you can put little things in here and there, um, do a post a week or, or something like that. Um, and a lot of people will start commenting. You can get, you know, some interaction that way. It's a great place to start because a lot of the community will start to see you around. And so if they start seeing your photos and your brand in those groups, you'll have, you'll have a lot more business attract, attraction from that. Tell us maybe your top three, four services, how you decide on what services to offer and what's the most profitable one and why? Sure, so we started out doing pressure washing of hard surfaces, so that would have been concrete, um, fences and, and things like that. As we switched to soft wash from pressure wash, as we found out that difference, we started doing uh, washing of siding and, and cleaning of roofs. In the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of moss that grows on the roof, oh, yeah. as you see, so um, it was important that we really focused on our roof cleaning. And so roof roof cleaning for us is definitely our biggest service that we offer. Every day we're cleaning roofs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a very big deal. And, and by far one of the most profitable ones as well. Okay, does roof cleaning include gutter cleaning obviously? Yeah, a lot of times we package it up that way to where when we're cleaning the roof, we like to clean the gutters out. It's just while we're up there, it makes it very easy at the same time. As we smell all this chlorine and all the cleaning and the bleach, right? <laughs> yep. Let's continue on with the interview. And I think the next question is really, how many hours are you investing now versus what it was when you got started? You know, what's the expectation? What, sh what should we be putting in and what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. When I first started, I put in a lot of hours. As you imagine, you're working, you're working the truck, you're doing all the estimates, you're following up with customers via email, you're Everything calling new. people. Yeah, so in the very beginning, you know, expect to put in <laughs> 10 hour days, um, 10, 12 hour days. I mean, they're really the sky's the limit. How fast, yep. what are your goals? Where do you wanna get, right? And now I started structuring it to where I have team members that help on different things. I have an office staff. Um, they, they take all the calls, they take all the emails. Uh, we, this is our service manager, Michael. Um, he deals with um, the customer satisfaction, making sure the crews are, are uh, where they should be and doing, mm -hmm. doing what they should be. So now Ooh. it's structured just a little bit differently. For somebody starting out, what would your suggestion or advice be in terms of what services to offer, what to focus on, right? Instead of 20 different things, yeah. what, would be, what would be your advice? Yeah, for someone just starting out, I know that I focused on just one or two easy, easy uh, services to at least get started. Get your feet wet, mm -hmm. figure out where you fit in this whole realm of business, services, you know, are you gonna be doing house washing? What kind of equipment are you gonna need for house washing, right? So it's really about starting small, getting your, getting your feet wet a little bit, start to understand how this business works, and then start looking at what else can I offer while I'm there, right? What else can I package up to make it a worthwhile experience for the customer? So okay. I, well, my advice, start small, and then eventually, you know, go, go from there and figure out what else you can clean. Any other form of advertisements besides Facebook that's really at the up top or just Facebook for, the, for now? I really just went straight into Facebook. Okay. I mean, um, you know, some Craigslist ads, if you can mess with Craigslist a little bit, there's some Craigslist ads that you can put in um, and that also can do very well. Um, but for just starting out, usually word of mouth, doing door knocking, that's super easy in your mm -hmm. neighborhood. Facebook community groups, as well as getting with your relatives, having them share the word of you starting a business, right. it'll get you a long ways. Okay, now you are a walk-in advertisement as well. Um, when did this t-shirt happen and this branding appear and really who helped you? And I think that's a loaded question, so what can you offer our audience in terms of how you can help provide those resources to them? Yeah, for sure. You know, branding is gonna be very important starting out. Um, you want a clear, concise brand that people will remember and, and it, it's a trust, it's a form of trust, right? So. Um, we decided to go with these shirts. It's at, they're chemical proof, so we don't have to worry about our chemical getting on here and staining it or anything like that. Okay. Um, as far as designing, um, I will actually be 
commenting down below on go, our designer that we use that designed our logo, designed our brand. It's very professional and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, especially when you're starting out. You don't need a $10,000 logo, right? Okay. So I'm gonna be posting his, um, his information down below. So feel free to comment, I'll reply to that and we'll be on our way. There you go guys, ask him a ton of questions. He'll be there to answer, we'll be there to answer as well. Steven, let's talk about your monthly advertising spend and what's giving you the best ROI. Yeah, so in our company, like I had said earlier, sales and marketing was our biggest thing. I focus heavily on it. So for, for our advertising spend, um, we spend anywhere from 10 to 12% of our overall revenue. Mm -hmm. So right now that can look at, we're anywhere from 10 to $12,000 a month wow, we spend okay. on advertising. So that's um, you know Facebook ads, Google ads, that's yard signs, that's direct mail. Uh, there's other things that we do as mm -hmm. well as that. But um, as far as the, the best ROI? Yeah, what is the best ROI? I would say Facebook by far. Okay. So social media has been by far some of the best things that we've ever done and, and focused very heavily on. What are important must-have skills in getting going and really getting going successfully? Yeah, I would say just starting out, sales and marketing. Those are the, the two main things. If you have all the equipment, if you don't have sales, if you don't have people that you can sell to, um, what's the point of having equipment, right? So the idea is where can you go, where can you prospect, what, what neighborhood can you knock on doors, um, get, the, get the lead flow coming in, and then you can buy the right equipment. Maybe you can have just small equipment at first, but then you can buy the right equipment to service those customers. So did you learn sales and marketing all on YouTube as well? And you mentioned just sitting there learning everything, or was there other sources that you that really helped you? Yeah, great question. Early on, it was, sales was, was my main focus. I mm -hmm. knew that I couldn't get anywhere without selling. So um, YouTube was a big part of that. There's, there's a bunch of guys on YouTube that, that have this info, a lot of videos um, that, that teach you about sales and, and you know, door, fly, door hangers, flyers, knocking on doors, those are all, all good things. But yes, YouTube was a big part of me learning the sales. That's yeah. exactly why we're doing this, you guys, for you. How many jobs are you guys doing on average every day? Yeah, so we try to do about about two jobs per truck. So right now we have three trucks um, that puts us at about six jobs a day. Mm -hmm. So is that, that pretty consistent during the busy times? Or it's, it's consistent. Um, it, you know, it, it could be it could be a roof cleaning, then it could be a gutter cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, it, it all just depends. So the prices definitely fluctuate depending on a package that the customer chose. But gotcha. uh, we do definitely try for two jobs a day in a specific area. Let's talk about building a strong team. You know, what can you share with us? What have you learned? And also, what do you look for when hiring new employees? Yeah, it's a great question. So, building a team, it's it's tough. If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? That's right. why you see so many people just doing work by themselves. So, what I look for when new new team members are wanting to get hired here is their attitude. That's like one of the first things that I look for. Mm -hmm. Do they have a positive attitude? Do they want to grow as a person? Because I am willing to give them all the tools for success, um, but I need them to have a positive positive attitude and an attitude for growth. Pretty simple. Yes. Uh, any tips or tricks about building a team other than, you know, having a positive uh, attitude? Per well, se? it's hard. What else? But leaders have to understand, business owners have to understand that when you have people working with you, you need to work for them. You need to lead up front, um, give them something, give them a leader that is, um, that is worth working for, right? Worth being around. Um, someone who is, is, has big goals and dreams for you as well. So there's a, there's a, f a lot of different things that, that kind of wrap up into that, yep. but that's kind of the short, short version. Awesome, it sounds amazing. All right, Steven, what's important is must have equipment for getting started in pressure washing businesses. Tell us what's must have. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're first starting out, really getting a good pressure washer, um, I would say four gallon a minute machine is where you want to start. Mm -hmm. um, anything before that isn't going to give you enough flow to clean the surface. So a four gallon a minute pressure washer, a few hoses, and a surface cleaner, which is a little round disc that you can clean driveways with. Okay. Best place to start. That's it. Okay. What kind what kind of brands stand out to you and cost wise? Yeah, Honda is a great type of engine. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very reliable. I would definitely start with the Honda and that's just about it. I mean, the Honda, your Honda generator is gonna get you exactly what you need. Love it, okay. Now you mentioned, um, well, how much does that cost by the way? Yeah, I mean, you can go on Craigslist, Facebook and buy buy one for 500 bucks, 600 bucks in your area. That's, I know it's a lot, but it's part of that startup cost. I talked about about $1,000 to $1,500. Okay, now you talk about four gallon. I'm not, you know, super savvy in the pressure washers, but it, 
what, how much PSI do you need? Is it a 1500 PSI up to 3000? What's the sweet range? Yeah, so for that four, four gallon a minute machine, typically it's right around 3500 PSI, 3000 okay. PSI. You wouldn't really want to go any lower than 3000 PSI for that. Got it. Um, gives you enough, enough power and enough flow to clean that surface. Okay. As you step away from the business hands-on and you run it as an organization, right? How do you make sure the quality stays the same and continues to improve as you give it over to your employees? I mean, that's a really tricky question. Huge, yes, yeah. it's very, very tricky. I was doing a lot of the, the quality control. Um, at the beginning of this year, I went ahead and hired our service manager, who's Michael, mm -hmm. and he takes care of all the quality control. So okay. now I can step away, focus on the business growth as an organization, and he really takes takes control of the service and to make sure that it, it's you know given at the highest quality possible. And so that really helps me helps take me out of that position and puts someone better suited for that. Uh, in, in that position. So you so. step away, but another person obviously has to fill that role. Yes. And that's Mike. Yes, and it's it's beautiful, you know, being able to delegate that to someone who is invested in making sure that's the best experience, mm -hmm. and I can keep focusing as a business owner on the things that I need to focus on. Okay, do you have any systems, tools that you also use that help you, you know, get client feedback, fix some issues if so, and stuff like that. Totally, so um, when the crew goes out to do a job, they have a, a customer service checklist, we call it a personal home report. Mm -hmm. And so they go through and they have to check off on every item that, that they did to make sure it's clean, make sure things were cleaned up correctly. Um, and that is eventually given to the customer and then the other portion of it is filed in our end as a company. So we're able to see, okay, was a job completed? If we have a, a complaint, we can go back there to that checklist and make sure it was completed and, and completed properly. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's talk about what your monthly overhead is specifically. Break it down for us. What's the most expensive, uh, you know, cost for that? Sure. I think the biggest, one of the biggest things is payroll, you know, um, right. paying employees, paying team members to do get the job done. As far as what our payroll costs look like, typically every every other week, it's about ten to $15,000 right now. Okay. So that's kind of our, our payroll cost for admin and our crews out in the field. Our hourlies for the employees. Yeah, um, what are you paying them? Yeah, so for assistant technician, it's eighteen dollars an hour currently, and for a lead technician, it's twenty dollars an hour. So okay. um, the, the lead gets a little bit more as he's you know in, in that position of leadership for the for the truck. Mm -hmm. Do you do any salary setups as well for like Mike who runs the you know the what's his title you mentioned? Yep, yep he's a service manager. Service manager. Yep. Yep. So Michael, um, it deals with the quality control, making sure mm -hmm. all the crews are are getting the work done um, as scheduled. Um, and he is on a salary, a salary based as well. So, okay. um, of course, his is structured a little bit differently, but we do have a couple salary positions as well. Gotcha. You guys, blitz time with Steven. Let's dive into it. Our audience know exactly what it is. What's one sentence you'd like to hear from your employees? Ooh, I would love to hear, how can I make more money? Okay. Yeah. Uh, now at the stage of your success, what would you tell your younger version? I know you're a baby still, <laughs> but let's say you're 11 years old. Sure. Um, you know, enjoy your, enjoy your younger years, you know, uh, how, I wish I would have flipped more things, made, you know, done a little more entrepreneur things as even younger. Okay. What's the weirdest thing that you've seen in somebody else's house? Inside, outside, doesn't matter. Um, the only weirdest things I've seen is, uh, pulling spatulas out of gutters and like, uh, you know, little rubber duckies and stuff out of people's gutters. <laughs> That's been pretty whack, but yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your morning routine? Morning routine, uh, wake up at 5 a.m., um, do, do a little bit of exercise. Usually I just do some stretching and then I just go deep into my sales training, do training every single day. Um, and then I'm usually ready by like 6.37. Okay. What's one book that you would recommend to our audience? A really good book that um, I absolutely love is Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. Fantastic book. For any entrepreneur, that book is gonna be amazing. So I would highly recommend reading that. Awesome, thanks Steve. All right, what's the best thing about being your own boss, Steven? And what are the, you know, downsides as well? So many great things and there's so many downsides. So of course not everyone's cut out for it. I believe um, as me as a person, I was, I was cut out for it. I was made for this. Mm -hmm. So that was easy for me to choose this route. The upsides are, you know, you've got this great team around you that um, can help pick things up when, when needed and I don't have to do it all myself. As far as some downsides, I mean, you know, 
you're working 24 seven, right. uh, your mind's always going, um, not everyone can handle that. And right. so as cut out for that, I understand that the pros and cons, uh, the pros definitely outweigh the cons in my book for, for what I'm doing. But um, this, those cons are definitely running 24 seven. I'm always thinking about it. You know, my wife at home is always, uh, is always wondering why I'm always thinking about the business, but it just is what it is. It so, is what it is, okay, yeah. that's awesome. Stephen, what role does social media play? I know we've touched on this very little, but what about Instagram? Anything else you haven't mentioned about Facebook that you can share with us? Sure. Yeah, I, I would. My best advice for viewers and people wanting to start their own pressure washing business is figure out where your clientele are. Mm -hmm. um, figure out are they are they on Craigslist? Are they on Facebook? Are they on TV? You know, everyone's got a different clientele base. So figure out where that is, and then just go all in. So for me, I found our clientele base on Facebook and, and, mm -hmm. and Instagram, and so there are a certain age group that we focus heavily on. And um, and that's just really where we found our client client base. What and is that age group? Yeah, the age group is anywhere from 30 to 60 plus. Okay. Um, and most of them are homeowners, of course. So we, we deal with a lot of homeowners, a lot more residential than commercial as of right now. Mm -hmm. So um, they own homes and they're, they're usually above 30 years old. Okay, yeah. you didn't mention Instagram. What's going on on the Instagram for you, if anything? Yeah, Instagram is tied to Facebook. So when we run at <laughs> our advertisements me. on Facebook, our Instagram is, is tied and connected to that. I However, see. Instagram, as you can imagine, has a, a more younger generation on there. Mm, so that right. may work for a different type of service versus what we're doing, but that could change and it will change. It's just right now, Facebook has been has been the hit. Okay, TikTok, no? No guys jumping with pressure washing wands and getting business in return for that? A lot of TikTok. I mean, TikTok is blowing up. The pressure washing space is an awesome place to be. So as for TikTok, you know, a lot of, a lot of satisfying videos of things getting cleaned. So it's you, great. So you guys do use TikTok? You know, it's something that we need to be doing. I okay. think everyone needs to be doing it, but we haven't, been, we haven't done it yet. You guys, we've interviewed other companies like this in the pressure washing world. Make sure you check those out. They're there for you. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that. Let's get back to Steven. Steven, let's talk about tips, tricks that our audience can hear from you that they can implement today, resulting in better results. What can you share with us? Yeah, especially for me, you know, having a great team, it really is just about taking care of your team. We're all working together in this big, in this big business, you know? Right. I call it a big business, but it's this atmosphere. We're all working together. And so taking care of each other is really, very important. One thing that we do before all the crews head back to the shop is we ensure everyone is done out in the field. So if one crew's come back early, um, it's important that they go help the other crews before mm -hmm. uh, before they head back to the shop so everyone gets done in a timely manner. It's very, very important to keep that that culture as a team teamwork, you know, teamwork. Right. And so um, we do that, it works out really well. It's great for people who have and team members and employees working with them. Steven, tell us a little bit more specific. Like, think of specific mistakes that you feel like you've made that you could have done different with what you know now. Yeah, for sure. I think a big one was not having the apparel when I would go um, knock on doors to, to ask for business or when I would show up to a, to a job to complete. I didn't have my logo on my shirt. I didn't have maybe my name on my shirt. Those are a lot of, those are two things that go a long ways mm -hmm. with, with, um, with clients. They wanna know that you're professional. If you show up in a raggedy t-shirt and some ripped jeans and tennis shoes, you might not get the same look as you would with a, with a nice shirt, with your logo, with your name, maybe your badge with your name. Right. Those are things that when they look at you, you're the professional. Something about appearance that resonates with people. Yes, 100%, 100%. They're, they're not gonna trust you as much doing the job uh, versus if you if you do have that, uh, your branding on mm -hmm. you. So would you be in agreement that, you know, if you've got the extra cash, start out with day one with yep. some form of brand and this kind of fancy t-shirt. This fancy t-shirt is a little bit more expensive. I would probably recommend going to your local t-shirt shop, um, mm -hmm. getting a couple logos printed on some t-shirts, even if it's even if it's some low quality t-shirts, yeah. at least it's something to get started. What's one important crucial skill that you think every entrepreneur should have? I think it's sales, hands down sales. Um, you know, of course, no good business can run without sales, so, or no business at all, really. Right. Um, sales is the driving force behind every company. So the, I, I believe every, everybody should learn that skill, okay. um, even if you're not directly in sales, it's just, it's very, very important. Like you said, sell or be sold, right? That's right. 
how do you know as a business owner that it's the right time to grow? And the second part is, tell us about scaling businesses. What's some tips and tricks there? Yeah, I'm new to this space, mm -hmm. but what I've learned in just the short time that I've been doing this is, you only can grow as fast as you have sales, right? People that want your service, if you don't have enough of that, how can you scale? How can you buy new equipment? So I like to, I like the rule of, of being a few weeks out booked before you start wanting, before you start putting more trucks on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you have work scheduled before you just say, I'm just gonna grow and scale. You right. gotta have clientele, you gotta have a plan, and you have to stick to that. And you know, things may change, you know, economies change, but you can't scale if you don't have sales. So sales and marketing, if you really wanna scale, that is what you have to have dialed in. That's a driving engine? Yes, 100%. Steven, give us the hack. Absolutely. So my biggest thing and my biggest hack for you guys, especially starting out and growing a business, is when you're offering a price to your customers, always give them three options. Always give them an A, a B, and a C. And the reason for that is, um, you know, when you go and just offer one price, it's either a yes or no, right? Um, when you offer three different options, when you offer, you know, maybe the window cleaning, maybe it's it's not so detailed, maybe we don't clean the insides, but just give them three options on your on your service, and then. And what'll happen is it'll give them options. It'll, it'll give like them the, the base price of package A, maybe it's not so expensive. Package C is your biggest package, and package B is right in the middle, right? Yeah. So it gives them some options, and you can. it's better than a, a yes or no situation. Maybe you can find a package that better tailors and better fits their needs. That's awesome. We're looking for that yes, right? That handshake to get the business. 100%. Serve the customer and earn some money. Yes. Awesome. Steven, this has been incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. What a cool business you're doing. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed this incredible episode with Steven, the owner of Northwest Softwash. What a young guy. At 18, started this business, built it to more than a million dollars in revenue per year. So I hope you guys took out a lot of awesome lessons from it. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out all other videos that we've done for you as well. Thank you.